Strategies for Real Estate, a 30-minute program updating you on today's real estate market and discussing current issues and opportunities in the desirable Silicon Valley. Plus, interviews with real estate experts giving you insight on what's to come. With your hosts, Tracy Knapp and Dan Lawson. And now, Strategies for Real Estate. Hello and welcome to our program. My name is Dan Lawson. I'm very happy you're with us today. We're going to start our program off with our real estate climate segment. Kelly Hunt from CSR Real Estate Services is my guest. And she's going to be, she and I will be talking about renting, owning, some strategies, the opportunities now that are available for renters and, and the correlations to being a home buyer and, and other strategies for people that are homeowners making their homes rentals because the rental market's so strong. So you want to stay tuned for that segment. Uh, then I have a, a very special guest from District 5170 Rotary, Rotary International. Our current district governor, Angie Hassler, is going to be my guest. And she's going to be talking about many of the good work, many of the good things and a great work um, Rotary does. And in particular, what was accomplished during this year as, as district governor. She's very excited about it. And I'm looking forward to sh having her share all the accomplishments all the clubs did around in our area. And we'll close our program with our viewer mail segment. Erica, Erica Glessing, she's a happiness coach. She's also a realtor, but she's a happiness coach. And she's going to share something I think a lot of us get stuck on, and that's allowing ourselves the opportunity and to, to become what, what life has in store for us and, and freeing up those things that, that tend to bind us and connect us to our past that, that keep us from achieving all that life has for us to achieve. So I think you're going to love that segment as well. So, in fact, all three segments are going to be great. It's now time for our Real Estate Climate segment. Hello and welcome to our Real Estate Climate segment. It's now my pleasure to introduce um, Kelly from CSR Realty. Thanks for being with us, Kelly Hunt. Thanks so much. Appreciate the opportunity to come back. It's always a pleasure. Oh, well, it's always nice to have you on. You're, you're so knowledgeable and, and you share um, a number of things that uh, many of my guests oftentimes don't drill down to. And you're, you're very knowledgeable in both, in both finance and in the real estate piece. So it's, it's, it's always fu fun and wonderful to have you on the show. Thank you. Well, you know, I, I, I want to talk about today. It was a topic you wanted to have as, um, you know, to discuss today. And that's to begin with, buyers now are, are well, they're somewhat challenged in mm -hmm. looking at rents. Mm -hmm. So let's talk first about homeowners that are vacating a house to buy another one and thinking, hmm, the rental market's so strong. Somewhat of a phenomenon right now, isn't it? Right. That the rental market's so high that I think I'll retain my house, buy another home and have two properties and have a renter move into the house I'm vacating. Exactly. Um, what the statistics are showing is that a lot of homeowners and home buyers right now are now becoming first time landlords. So. Um, because the market had declined so much over the years in the past, it actually, for the first time, I mean, I've been in the industry for over 30 years, and it's the first time in probably 15, 20 years where you could afford to buy a home in the Bay Area and actually make it a rental because you couldn't cash flow before because property was so challenge. expensive. Exactly. So uh, for the last several years, we've seen a lot of people step up and get into that market. Um, unfortunately, that's quickly diminishing because as the cost of homes has really climbed the last two years, it's less likely for you be, to be able to purchase a home with a reasonable down payment without you know, liquidating all your, your assets um, and still have a positive cash flow. So we're gonna start to see that slow down quite a bit, yeah. but right now a lot of first time home buyers are actually buying homes as uh, investment property. So. Well, well, yes, exactly. Let's talk about this. I know you have some points you want to make. And what's interesting, when, when a renter, if they're looking at X payment mm -hmm. and you buy a house and you have X minus the tax deduction that you might likely get for it, right? it, it tends to balance out. And, and, it does. And then you're in the escalator of appreciation of home value. Yes. Now, so the last couple of years as the rents have, have been climbing because there's a shortage of rental units as well as a shortage right. actually homes for sale. Um, and quite frankly, California in particular, the Bay Area, is one of the most expensive places to rent uh, in the nation. Uh, I think it's California and Hawaii. And there, the estimates are 61% of people in California can't afford to rent a two-bedroom apartment. 
uh, because the cost of rents is so high. So in California, in California, in particular the Bay Area. Yeah. So um, that's created a Probably demand. Probably the metropolitan areas. Pretty yeah. much right here. So when you go looking for homes to rent, you're going to find that the demand is really high, which means the cost of renting has gone up quite a bit. So when you compare, like you said, that tax basis of buying a home, having a tax deduction, your payments, first off are almost the same purchasing as they are renting, but even if they're slightly more, you're still getting a savings because one, you're gonna have that tax deduction, but more important, you're gonna build equity. I mean, that's really the purpose of buying a home is one, you can call it your own, but you also have the uh, appreciation that's gonna take place over the years, and you can't do that when you're renting. So people can't save money as fast as property tends to appreciate around here. It, 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 is, it is an amazing thing. Mm -hmm. you know, and I was talking to a client recently that, you know, we'll just use simple math. Let's say you'd look at like a 20 thousand dollar investment in a bank account or mm -hmm. in a stock account or whatever you want to buy right and if you if you were to take that twenty thousand and buy real estate with it you're not getting a return on investment on the down payment you're getting a return on investment on the, the total, appreciation yeah on the total value and you get of the home a, you get a three percent four percent five percent what have you right on that upper value so it, it really is a is a, an exponential benefit for right. the home buyer. And quite frankly, uh, the last two years, I mean, conservatively, 17 to 20 percent appreciation. And that's a very conservative figure. It's actually a lot more than that in some areas. Yeah. And that's again based on the purchase price, as you were saying. And, and you just can't do that in any other type of investment. That's right. So. But, you know, and, and it's interesting because people. You know, people hear that, they have, well, how, how long is it going to continue to run like that? Right. You know, the run rate, well, sure, there's probably going to be another adjustment. And, you know, with all we see, it, it may slow down, but it looks like values are going to continue to roll. Right. Um, even if they don't, it depends on your time horizon. So if you're in for the long haul, if you're just looking for investment, mm -hmm. you really need to be aware of, of what your investment potential is. Right. Because it's like a stock. When do you buy and when do you sell? Correct. But most, most smart investors will buy a stock and hold it. Yeah, most people are buying a home because they're going to live there for a long period of time. They want to be so, part of a neighborhood, part of a community, and raise their family. Right, exactly. And what I tell people is that they can't afford here, but they live and they work here. Great point. If there's a place that they can afford, um, in particular, they should look at areas that they would likely retire in. So, for example, if somebody wants to eventually go to Arizona, it may be cheaper in some of those areas than it is to buy here. So if they can buy an investment property in a place that they think they may want to retire in, they can make it a rental for now. And then when they get ready to retire, then you fix it up and then you move in and there you've, you've already locked in that tax base because right. of the uh, appreciation and, and the rise of reassessment and things like that. So it's beneficial to try to do that now when you can afford it, if you can't afford to buy here. That, that, that's a great point and I think Again, I think that's missed by a lot of people. Right. That they're, they're so singularly focused. Well, if I'm renting, I should save my money until I can buy a house that I can live in. Exactly. But real estate is real estate. It's always best. But if you do enjoy living in this valley and want to stay here, mm -hmm. and, you're, and you're then the consequences to rent, why not look at a house that might be 100, 150, 200,000? Yep. It, it's a, a very affordable. There are affordable places still. <laughs> there are some very affordable places outside of this area. Yes. And you can have a property manager handle it for you and things like this. So Exactly. So let, we, we've got a few minutes left. So let's talk about a buyer here in our area. Mm -hmm. And what, what are some, what are some well, maybe some best strategy or best points you have about the, the listing process and how to optimize their opportunity to be selected? Well, um, what I tell people is when you look at uh, the main source of information for buyers, it's the internet. And when you Google on the internet, you're going to get things like Trulia and Zillow and things like that. But what people don't recognize is that those sites are being fed by a secondary source. And they're actually missing, statistically, it's my understanding that uh, Zillow typically has about 72% of the inventory that's actually up to date and active. And Trulia is actually as low as, uh, I believe, 68%. So, you know, the buyers are missing a good portion of the inventory out there because what's listed on those sites has actually already been sold or hasn't passed through yet. So, um, when I looked at the st statistics, um, they're indicating that the real estate agents who have a search parameter in their websites that's directly linked to the MLS, which is the MLS that we all use, right. they're more likely to get a true indication of what's available in the inventory because you need to jump as quickly as possible when stuff comes on the market. So they really do need to connect up with a real estate agent, find their local agent that they, that they're li that they like or that's been referred to them, and then get a search set up and then stay on top of it and just avoid, I'm not saying that those other sources aren't viable for other things or they're great nice for information. They're great for information, but for real 
really staying on top of the market, they're not the best source of information for buyers to really keep their fingers on the pulse. Exactly, if, and if you want to be ready to make a move on a particular property, because likely, the all likelihood is it'll be gone by the yeah. time you're ready to make That's an offer. That's absolutely correct. So, yeah. as always, thanks for being with us, Kelly. You're very welcome. All right, look forward to having you on soon. Thanks, Mitch.